all right guys welcome back to my channel so this is the part two of the honda odyssey with a sliding door issue we have the parts and uh, we're ready to start taking it apart so this is the center roller for the right side door and i also had you know i ordered the upper one because since this one is being you know kind of like force in the rest i you know worry about the upper roller to be damaged and might as well replace both at the same time so i want to show you how that roller looks so this is kind of like uh, the position that we will have this is it will roll with the door let me kind of like position it so you guys get a better idea so that's kind of like this looks inside the uh, inside there so i will roll back and forth so by moving like this means either this one which I think this is the one is damaged or this one but most likely is the one in the back is already damaged this is a spring uh, bracket and a pin so this is the sorry for that this is kind of like the other part that gets attached to the door and uh, they send you the, also the, the pin that slides through so this is like a one piece on the car all these three pieces together everything is original from Honda so I'm going to start taking that apart. The first thing you have to do is uh, you have to come with a Felix screwdriver on the inside of the door. So you have to take this in order to remove that trim that will allow us to get more room in order to remove the roller. We have to play a little bit with the cables in there because in order to, to, re to release it. What I usually do too is I let the door seat on, on a jack stand so like that can move back and forth a little bit so I can work in that. But you will see that on the video. Sorry for that finger in the camera view. So let's just start. Well, you also need to remove the rear uh, stop lamp in order to get access to this number 10 bolt in there which also holds that trim. I already removed the one in the front. So let me one of my uh, ratchets in here and that's not the right socket so the ones on the screws on the front and in the back of that trim are I mean sorry for the lights are Phillips and the one on the front is a Phillips and this is a number 10 I might pick up the same one again <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm going back and forth with the wrong socket. Okay, so that's a number 10. That on the tray right here. And that will let me pull the trim. I'm gonna have to stop the video so I can get it off. You have to pry a little bit and then push it forward in order to remove it. This is uh, with the trim removed. Again, what you got to do is just push it forward, you know, forward from the car in order to get access. This is how it looks like we have a, a better approach. Oh, yeah, definitely. Let me show you right there. As you can see, see that pin on top? It has no Teflon rollers at all. So these ones in here are completely gone. So that is definitely our issue. My next step will be to remove these two bolts in here so I can release the door from from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the cables come probably this way a little bit and then release that. Like that I can move the door towards the front and uh, get me a better access to work on this. I remove the two number 12 uh, bolts that hold this, this bracket in place and again I just let the door seat on uh, the accent and I slide it forward I put the roller kind of like in that position so you can remove those cables easier because uh, these are the you know these cables are the ones that rolls and back back and forth the door so and they're attached into the bracket you can see one wire you know one cable here one the other one in here let me show you on the new one so you understand more so this is where the wires are going to be hooked it's kind of like an accelerator pedal type of connector in there you know it's just like a ball that it slides in all right so let me remove that and 
I, I'm going to clean and grease up the uh, the rail. I have a special Honda grease for that too. Don't don't put too much. Just enough for the roller not you know to not work too dry and um, and to not collect too much dust. No matter what, this has a trim protecting it from the uh, ambient you know dust and water and so. So a little bit on the bottom. I will clean all this very good and then on top in here too which is 100% dry and with the metal debris from this sliding like this I mean you can see this look at it's completely completely destroyed oh wow that's you guys can see that better now I'm gonna hook it in there so it doesn't damage the paint all right let me keep going this is a very simple procedure if you know what you're doing and or otherwise check this video very well I will put the link on the first one so you guys can understand what the diagnosis and you know um, checking before you know correct any everything or anything on the problems like uh, like this on a sliding door for your Honda Odyssey okay and I got the new one installed uh, again it's a pretty easy procedure uh, what I used to clean the rail was a rag with carbon cleaner or brake cleaner and then again I put this slight coat of grease there's a special white grease and also on the tap as you can see on the upper rail it's a little hard that's all you have to grease up again it's a small film don't put too much otherwise I will collect dust and the breeze that you really don't want because I will damage the roller faster okay so I'm going sorry <laughs> install both of the uh, rollers you can see this is the new one right there the upper one wasn't bad at all but I mean I have it so definitely want to replace it Put both in here yep mm -hmm. so this is how the upper roller looks oh, wow, that one is cheap I'm here so let's uh was the door being upgraded and now it's smoothly going close let me put this part away and operate the door open now so it's now nice and smooth obviously you know with those rollers are better uh, there's nothing else in here still going to check with a scanner to see the uh, you know make sure all the switches and everything is working as it should and we have no other codes or anything related to this sliding door and uh, we'll call it a fix all right so let me put that trim back together put the stoplight and then connect the scanner be right back okay I put everything together I have the car running and uh, the scanner connected I have just uh, run the bin that's out of the tech it is a 2010 Honda Odyssey. It's uh, USA. It's in prospect that we can both see what we're doing. <coughs> All right, we're going to go to diagnosis, uh, control unit and from here we're gonna go to doors so that will be probably in let's see body electrical And then we have the power sliding door. We read the code first. Okay, we have a short in the rear mode control motor circuit. Rear mode control motor circuit. I think this is a body, you know, like this is for the air condition, and this is a code that has nothing to do with this uh, sliding door. So let's put the function test. 
and this is the right door so we have some different tests in here let's uh, try this one now testing if you want to stop press ok right PSD drive motor open oh well this is open so as you can see it's in there we we'll try to close so if we go to open it will try to open all right let's go back to close and just switching you know between close and open it's just a little bit because if I want to keep closing it's it's like you know in the steps all I'm doing in the scanner is going back and forth from close and as you can see it's just it's not closing completely same thing will be right now if I try to do the open that is just testing you know the, the open motor again as you can see it's just a little bit <coughs> so those two those two are fine PSD clutch release release actuator close motor you see this one in here move the rear latch assembly on the back of the door from the full latch position to the half latch position as in the screwdriver when the door reaches the half latch position the door is pulled to the full latch position automatically well we're not doing this test so we know that it's closing and releasing we know the left side is working good. Let me check the leave data or live data. So we're on the right side door. Let's actually door open, close, the remote. Try not to collect too many because otherwise we will not be able to see. But I, you know, I want to show you guys what the difference is in between the right or the left, if any, which I'm not suspecting. We have no codes now. Um, switch to remote control, switch three, transmission, I don't need that. Uh, window is on, left rear door, sliding door, locking up. Uh, let's pick up those two. I don't care about the tailgate. Main switch. It has, you know, a lot of switches in the door that we need to to check or to see, you know, based on the position of the door. Left power slide door base position switch. Those are also part of what we will be looking for. Right power sliding door switch. I don't care about those. Let's go on the slider. Okay, we need this. It's like I said, there's a lot of switches in here. That's the, the pinch sensor. That's the one, if, you know, if the door feels an obstruction, it's going to, you know, to make it either go open or stop. Okay, so that's not what I wanted to do. Metal clutch. Sensor. Oh my God! There is a lot of a lot of pits, so it's going to be hard to see all in one. Uh, for this, let me turn the car off. We don't need to run in. Well, actually, I do. Otherwise, I will lose communication with the scanner. So let me bring the scanner over to this side so we can look of that see well what changes we can see Oops. okay so I'm gonna keep you guys focused on the scanner and I'm going to be pressing the switch next to the door the actuates the doors so that's the light left side I'm closing it as you can see we have just one pair that changes in there that was the remote control switch one I'm going to open it and that's the only one that changes in here so let me go to the right side and close it we have nothing in here I'm open it 
so none of this one changes except for again the control switch one and it's most likely the other one will be on the door see again that's the number one is the one that changes when I'm pressing on the main let's say you know main switch which is right here so let's see what happens when I push uh, the knob outside uh, you know the door handle that will be the left side still calls switch number one let's go to the next um, yeah we have more activity here you can see all those are on full light switch is on ratchet switch is on half latch switch is on so let's operate the left side again and go from on to off which meaning it's working and same thing on the other side that's okay so left power slide main switch okay well that is included on here I shouldn't but it looks like all the switches and everything is working good let me see the pinch okay so I see right door pulser sensor let me see if that changes at any time as detect okay that's in the middle of the travel of the door all the way to the to the latch position let's take a look at that when it opens same thing it, it reacts when it goes from the middle to the all the way open all right so this is information I like to share and to say because I mean when you are shaking a future door or myself I can come back and you know inspect this one right now both doors are working a hundred percent so I can take this as a known good scenario in order for me to check anything later on or you guys as well you know because I think it's very easy to run a video and then you run your own scanners and do the same test so what I'm doing right now again is just pressing open and close on both for both doors to see the difference in here uh, and that's what will you you know you will expect to see when the door is closing and uh, you can see the command of the door and the latch because this doors at the end it pulls the door in and latches it that's in the open position again now close as it commands is in there perfect and let me go up what was that a pinch position sensor right here left side As you can see that pin sensor is not detect detecting any obstruction so let's take one I'm gonna try to stop the door on the way shut I was not able to see anything in there it's very very on the floor so what I was trying to do let me show you how accurate or sensitive the door sensors are this is what I was trying to this is what I was trying to say it's like you know if it's any obstruction minimum this is I mean I'm it's not even putting a mu you know a lot of four on my feet and it just go back this is a protection for the kids or yourself somebody presses the close bottom it's not gonna break your bones so Again, everything is working perfectly, so I think that's it, guys. Uh, hope you liked. Uh, hope you guys liked the video. And don't forget to subscribe. 
everything is working good let me go back just one second make sure that we have no um, no codes again except for the one we already, we already checked before which is for the mode door that is for the air conditioning so yeah we have nothing else all right guys thank you so much and i hope you guys like the video